Hello everyone. In our last video, we had looked at uh, a three-phase balanced supply, supplying load to a three-phase unbalanced load. In that case, what happens to the currents? So we had considered a three-phase four-wire system like this. Now, instead of three-phase four-wire system, what happens if I consider a three-phase three-wire system? That means uh, if I delete this uh, neutral wire, So then what happens? Now we have a three phase balance supply supplying power to the three phase unbalanced load. Why it is unbalanced load? Because the impedance in A phase is purely resistance 5 ohms impedance in B phase is 2 minus J3 that is capacitive because minus is there and the impedance in the C phase is 4 plus J3 which is the reactive impedance. So different impedances are there that will result in an unbalanced load situation. Earlier we had considered 3 phase 4 wire system now we have a 3 phase 3 wire system. So let's solve this particular uh, problem and try to find so the question is same calculate the current in all branches and complex power in each phase for the following system with three phase balance supply with unbalanced load whereas we have a three phase three wire system so the objective is to find what is ia what is ib what is ic and what is the power in a a phase power in b phase and power in c phase the complex power you may pause the video now and uh, try to solve this yourself and later you can unpause it and you, you can compare with my uh, solution okay so let's let's uh, begin so if you look at it the difference from a three phase four wire system the neutral point is grounded here that means always the neutral point is a zero volts or we can consider this as the uh, ground to find the potential of any point in the circuit and this point was earlier connected so this point was also zero volts but now uh, that is not the case because of this uh, removal of this line there would be some voltage at this point so let us call it as vn so vn is a symbol i am using for the voltage at this particular point so now what is the voltage at this particular point this is v a n or simply VA. So with respect to this N, I think let's not confuse, let's call this as VM and this is VN. So the voltage at this point is VAN and the voltage at this point is VM. So the potential difference between this V, this, that is nothing but VAN minus VM. So remember again, this is the complex voltage, this is also a complex voltage, it will have a magnitude and angle and so on. So this is the potential difference from this point to this point. So from here it is 0 volts, so voltage increases to 80 volts and uh, there is a drop in this, finally we get the voltage of Vm. And here Vm is not 0 because the unbalanced situation is there, Vm is unknown. Now this voltage drop is nothing but the Ia multiplied by Za. So this is nothing but product of Ia and Za. So this is a simple uh, Ohm's law. The voltage difference between these two points is nothing but the voltage drop because of the current multiplied by the impedance. We get one equation like this. Now what about the another equation? So if you look at the another branch, the point voltage here is Vbn. The voltage with respect to this is again 80 minus uh, 120 degrees so and the voltage here is again Vm and the voltage drop in this part of the branch is Ib into Zb so I can write this Vbn minus Vm is equal to Ib Zb so similarly again you can notice from here to here the voltage here is Vcn and the voltage here here is also Vcn because this is just a line that is connecting of zero uh, impedance. So here also Vcn and here it is Vm. So the drop is nothing but I multiplied by Ic multiplied by Zc. So let me write that as an equation Vcn minus Vm is equal to 
IC ZC. Now uh, I have from all these things how do I solve? See VM is unknown, VA is known, IA unknown and ZA, ZB, ZC these are all known. So what I can do is from this I'll write an equation like this VM equal to. From the first one simply take the VM to the right side and bring this to the other side that is nothing but VAN minus IA, ZA. Similarly again VM equal to from the second equation I can write VBN minus ZB IBZB. Similarly VM is equal to VCN minus IC ZC. So like this we get this uh, equation. Now again if you notice I know VA and VB and VCN I know but I don't know what is ZDA, ZB and ZC. So we still need, so we have four unknowns actually, VM is one unknown and uh, all these things. We still need to uh, manipulate uh, further on these equations. Okay, so what we do is, actually I realized just now that uh, this set of equations is not required. So let me just redraw the same circuit once again here and actually it makes everything immediately uh, clear. See, look at this branch, there is a 80 volts VAN in series with ZA and then it is like this. So I can actually draw a circuit like this. So this is VAN and this is ZA and the current here is IA. This is one branch, these two, this branch. Now coming here, this is another branch. So I have this and then another branch here and another impedance here and then these two are actually connected like this. And again I have another branch like this and like this. So this is VBN and this is VCN and this is ZB and this is ZC and this is IB and this is IC. So if you notice these two are exactly same. This entire circuit is nothing but exactly same as this circuit. Now the potential of this whole part is Vm and here it is actually connected to the ground 0 volts. So if you look at the first one actually you see Van minus Vm uh, is nothing but Ia drop and so on like this. But if you see here if I apply Kirchhoff's current law here Ia plus Ib plus Ic all three currents are going to this node and the all are incoming currents there is no outgoing current therefore IA plus IB plus IC is 0. So by KCL I can write IA plus IB plus IC equal to 0. So this equation will help us finding out what is VM in this. See if I notice from the first equation what is IA? VAN minus VM divided by ZA. So I can I can write like this. So VAN minus VM divided by ZA. So this whole part is nothing but IA from, from this. Now look at the second equation. So I'll just add to it VBN minus VM divided by ZB. So this whole part is nothing but IB current. Again from here you can see VCN minus Vm divided by Zc. So this one Ia plus Ib plus Ic is equal to 0. So from this now I have eliminated see we have one equation and one unknown. See I, Va and Za I know, Vb, Zb I know and Vc and Zc I know. Only Vm is unknown. So from this I can manipulate this equation and find what is Vm. And once I find Vm I can I can simply use these equations and find IA, IB and IC easily. So let's let's uh, do that calculation here. So if you see VAN, if I separate separate all these uh, terms, you see VAN by ZA minus VM by ZA plus VBN by ZB minus VM by ZB uh, plus VCN uh, 
Vcn by Zc minus Vm by Zc. Sorry. So all this is zero. Now if I take the negative terms one side and positive terms on the other side, then I'll get Van by Za plus Vbn by Zb plus Vcn by Zc. All of this will be equal to. I'll take Vm common. 1 by Za plus 1 by Zb plus 1 by Zc. And finally, from this, I can find what is Vm. Is nothing but Van by Za plus Vbn by Zb plus Vcn by Zc. All of this divided by 1 by Za plus 1 by Zb plus 1 by Zc. So, uh, if you look at this equation, it, it looks very similar to the Millman's uh, theorem. So, if you are uh, familiar with the network theorems, Millman theorem, uh, it also is nothing but the application of that here. Anyway, we don't need to know the theory of that. Just I have anyway because derived everything here. So, now everything on the right side is known. So, I can simply determine what is Vm. And once I know Vm uh, from, from this, what is Ia? So Ia is nothing but Van minus Vm by Za. So I'll write that Ia is Van minus Vm divided by Za. Similarly, Ib is Van minus Vm divided by Zb and Ic is Van minus, sorry, this is Vbn and Vcn. This is B. Vm divided by Zc. So, I, on one hand, I have these four unknowns are solved like this. So, let us uh, go back to my uh, MATLAB interface and in that, uh, I'll show you. So, on the left side, what you see on the screen was my previous uh, uh, calculation. So, here, uh, I think I need to reconnect. Here, uh, I'll get the present calculation. Okay, so VA, VB, VC, the voltages are defined as it is. ZA, ZB, ZC are also defined as it is. So instead of using this formula, now I have to use a different formula. So let me go up and here I'll find VM. What is VM? Just now we have seen uh, here VAN by ZA. So VAN, I'm in MATLAB, I'm using VA. So VA by ZA, VB by ZB and VC by ZC. So in the numerator, I have VA divided by ZA, I think I should use capital VA plus VB divided by ZB plus VC divided by ZC. And whole of this is again divided by 1 by ZA plus 1 by ZB plus 1 by ZC. Now, because I'm using a, a programming a tool like uh, MATLAB. So this becomes very easy. Uh, the same thing if you want to do it using a scientific calculator, it will be slightly, you can still do it, it will be slightly uh, bigger process. So now once I know Vm, so this is as simple as this, I think everything is uh, correct here. So once I find Vm, uh, what is Ia? So here, I just have to slightly vary this formula. So Vm, so minus Vm, divided by Za. So here also Vb minus Vm divided by Zb and here also Vc minus Vm divided by Zc. So simple. Now here earlier I calculated the neutral current uh, but here the, because it's a three phase three wire system neutral current will not be there. Anyway I will still keep this because I am expecting now In to be zero because of the way we are uh, doing it. Now next is uh, absolute value of Ia and angle of Ia, absolute value of Ib, angle of Ib, this all is same. Now these formulas are exactly same. The complex power in A phase, complex power in B phase is exactly the same. This is Ia Za into conjugate of Ia and, and so on. And the total power will be nothing but SA plus SB plus SC. So I think we have everything ready here. So just pause the video, go through all these uh, equ equations once again. It is uh, is straightforward. So 
again i am repeating if you use a tool like this it is very easy to uh, write a program and get the results otherwise if you are using a scientific calculator it will be slightly longer process but even then also you can get the solution so let's execute this oh, i think i should use capital vm here let's ex execute it so that's it so i got all the uh, answers here so here you see vm is about 50 minus 18.57 j and i have ia ib and ic these are currents expressed in uh, rectangular form and you see in the neutral current is 4.4 .4, but here 10 to the power of minus 16 that means it has very negligible value so just magnify it okay okay so uh, and uh, here i can find the a phase current b phase current and c phase currents here so all three currents are different so therefore the currents are imbalanced and finally here i am getting a phase active power only 249 watts and b phase active power c phase active power total active power so let me transfer all these results to uh, my writing pad here so let's go down here so from calculations So Vm is equal to, uh, let's print the absolute value of Vm and angle of Vm. This 180 by pi is for conversion to degrees instead of radians. So let's quickly run this. So here I'm getting 53.33 minus 20.3 degrees. So this is the vm so now i have ia ib and ic so let me write it in the vector form 7.05 28.65 and 25.15 these are all magnitudes so whereas the angles are also important 31.7 94.29 that is minus 94 and this is minus 98.8 degrees this is in amperes now what are the complex powers sa sb and sc so the complex powers are 249 plus j0 1641 or i'll round it off to 1642 plus j 2463 i'll round it off to 2463 and this is b phase now c phase 253 2531 and 1898 1898 so this all is in volt amperes so these are all in watts and these are all in watts uh, i'm sorry here i should be careful this is negative or positive doesn't matter uh, this one is negative so let me just delete this i should be very careful with this now what is the significance of this negative so the power the reactive power demand is minus 2463 that means the b phase is actually generating 2463 wars of uh, reactive power out of the 2460 some wars of reactive power is going to the local c phase nothing is going to zero phase and the remaining power is actually returning back to the supply that is the interpretation of the negative sign so what is the total uh, power so the total power if i add all this string i'll get 4421 or 4422 watts and minus j 564 So this is volt amperes. So like this, I'm able to calculate the complex power. So uh, I hope you had learned something from solving a 
unbalanced load with three phase three wire system three phase four wire system will have a direct connection like this then the vm will be equal to zero then it's straightforward three individual this thing so in other words here if i simply short circuit these two this will become three phase four wire system so uh, therefore this is zero volts and this is zero volts so directly ia will be vm by za ib will be vb by zb and ic will be vc by zc so individually i can calculate the all these values and uh, in this case there will be some current neutral current flowing here because uh, there is a path and and like that so let's uh, let's move further and uh, try to analyze uh, in the next video i want to show how a two watt meter method works in measuring the power i want to measure the power consumed by the demand how to measure with two just two watt meters instead of three watt meters see you in the next video if you like this video please press the like button subscribe my videos and you will be getting more updates on videos on electrical engineering thank you so much